have everybody here this morning on this beautiful, beautiful Easter morning. Let's all stand to our feet. Look over to your neighbor and say, howdy. How you doing? Praise God. It's a joy to have you here. Let's bow our heads in prayer this morning, and let's just go to the Lord in prayer concerning this special day. Father, we come together in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask that you just minister by your Holy Spirit today, that you will just touch every heart, and that you will touch every life. Lord, let every person receive a blessing today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Before you're seated, go ahead and shake hands with five or six people, and then you may be seated this morning. God bless you.
Well, give Jesus a hand clap. I think he's worth all of it. Folks, why don't you stand to your feet with me? We're going to sing a few songs together this morning. How many knows that song? It's called Let the Redeemed of the Lord Say So. How many knows that? All right. It's a real simple chorus. And uh, if you don't know it, we'll sing it through once, and then you should be able to catch all the words, and then just sing it together with us. How many knows how to clap your hands? Do you know how to clap your hands? Yeah, she's demonstrating already. All right, here we go. Oh, let the
sounded terrible. Say it again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it good to be here this morning? Amen. Amen. Magnifying Jesus together. Let's sing another hymn this, this morning. It's entitled Amazing Grace. How many knows that one? Amazing Grace. I think probably everybody here probably knows that song. Let's sing it together. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. How sweet. amazing grace. You may be seated this morning. Give the Lord another hand clap as you do so. Praise God. You know, they used to say in this church years ago, they used to say, everybody SOS. SOS, that means scoot over some, okay? We've got a lot of folks that's coming in and we need to pack everybody in that we can. So if it's possible, scoot next to your neighbor. And uh, aren't you glad everybody used, or aren't you glad you used dial? Don't you wish everybody did? <laughs> Boy, it's good to have you here. We just appreciate you coming and being a part of this service this morning. Amen. Let me quickly make, mention that next Sunday night, next Sunday night we're going to have some very special guests here to minister to us uh, with a concert. They're entitled The Last Generation, a group that's here local, and uh, they're going to be here next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We'd like to invite each and every one of you to come and to bring somebody with you and just to enjoy that wonderful concert, amen, with us next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Praise God. How many likes to hear kids sing? Do you like to hear kids sing? All right. We're going to go ahead and invite the children's church to come at this time, and they're going to sing a few songs. Go ahead and give a hand clap for them.
Mark, give him another hand clap. Give him another hand clap. They did great. When your child comes to the children's church, they learn how to do aerobics and the whole bit. All that good stuff. Amen. We're going to go ahead and invite Brenda and Angela to come. They have a special to sing before we get into this sermon this morning. Well, before they come, I'm sorry, we need to take up our offering this morning. Amen. Some of you was just hoping that I'd forget that, didn't you? Amen. I'd like to go ahead and ask our ushers to come at this time. The offering plates are right over here on the piano. Praise God. Praise God. Remember, if you filled out that visitor's card, if you would just slip that in the offering plate as it comes by.
we could have everybody get ready for the illustrated sermon this morning. You know that song spoke about how will they know unless we tell them. Well, that's why we're here this morning. We're here today to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to you more or less in its entirety this morning. I believe this morning that every person here desires to be loved. Not the love of this world, but the love of their Heavenly Father. Well, you see, the scriptures tell me that God sent His Son to this world to die on a cross for you and for me. And I've chosen for a text this morning for this special illustrated sermon. The title of the sermon is called Jesus, the Ultimate Sacrifice. We've chosen for that text today Romans chapter 5, <coughs> verses 6, 7, and 8. For you see, the Bible says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In a few moments, the lights are going to be going out. Music is about to be played. And the darkness that you're going to sit in will represent the darkness of someone's heart who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior and as your Lord. You know, you might be sitting here today and you might feel dark on the inside. You might feel like nobody loves you, like nobody cares for you. But the scripture we just said shows us that God demonstrates his love. And we're going to do the best that we can this morning to show what actually took place 2,000 years ago in another land at another time and show you the demonstrated love of God. When the lights go out, you can make sure your children don't run out in, in the aisle if that's possible. There's lots of activity that's going to be taking place coming down that center aisle. We don't want anybody to get hurt. But today you've come to find the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think you've come here just to be entertained. I don't think you've come here in search of religion. But you've come here this morning in search of a relationship with your Heavenly Father. And you're about to see and witness for yourself Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice. Take it into your heart and into your life this morning. God bless you.
you're beginning to see for yourself this morning exactly what Jesus went through. You see, the Bible says that they had placed a crown of thorns upon his head, pushed it down into his skull, blood streamed down his face. The Bible says that they flogged Jesus, that they whipped Jesus and placed stripes upon his back, opened flesh on his back. Many doctors will say today that Jesus was already in critical condition before he went to the cross to actually be crucified. He was stripped of his dignity, actually stripped of his clothing, and made to walk in open shame through those streets on the way to Golgotha. But I can remember growing up in church, sitting in church and listening to the gospel being preached. But that didn't mean that I was going to heaven just because I went to church. I remember receiving junior membership into the church. And that still didn't mean that I was going to heaven. But until at the age of 18 years old, I got down on my knees and I said, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of every sin. And come into my heart and come into my life. For you see, the Bible says that every single one of us have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that you can't get to heaven unless you be born again. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3 that there was a man by the name of Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, that talked to Jesus and, and Jesus said, Nicodemus, don't you know, don't you know that you must be born again? All the things that you do, all the works that you do won't get you to heaven. He said, you must be born again. And God knew that man needed to be redeemed. God knew that the only way that they could be redeemed by, was by the shedding of His Son's blood. But I believe today that you've come in search for God. And that God can touch you. And that God can minister to you. Jesus said you must be born again. Let us receive Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord today. Receive Him and know that He is King of kings and Lord of lords in your heart and in your life even today.
Go with me now as we go to the place of the skull. Golgotha. We call it Calvary, where Jesus was crucified. He hung between two thieves. The religious people of that day found Jesus, found his, his guilt to be worthy of death. The Bible says they took him and they hung him on a cross, driving nails into his hands and into his feet. He was already in critical condition, but I can imagine the pain and the suffering that he's going through at this very moment. As I look at the eyes of Jesus, I see compassion. And at the same time, I can actually notice that he sees into my heart. And he knows if I'm right with God. He knows where I stand with him, but those eyes of compassion I look upon them and I know that I can be forgiven. You see, the Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's something about this scene. I can't turn away from it. I can't look away. These ladies that have come. Can you turn away? You can't turn away? Can you turn away? Can you actually walk out of this building today without saying, I haven't been touched by the hand of God? Well, let Jesus touch you. Let him minister to you. Oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That blood, that life-giving blood, oh, the blood of Jesus. Jesus hung on the cross. He said those words. Woman, behold your son and behold your mother. Here was a family that was reunited once again because Jesus hung on the cross and he bled and he died. You might be seated here today and your family life might be in turmoil, but God can repair it. He can bring it back together. Your marriage might be on the rocks, but Jesus can restore it. And he can place a love back into your heart once again for that person that you've chosen to be your mate. When we were living back in Colorado, a fellow that came to our church, he asked me to come over one evening over to his house. He said, my wife and I were having some marital problems. And he said, would you come over and counsel us? I thought for a minute, and I thought, you know, I, I'm not a good counselor at all. Probably the worst counselor there is. Don't have a degree in it. But I said, yeah, I'll come over. We went over to his house, and we sat around the table. Tears began to stream down their eyes as he began to tell me all the problems that they've been having. And he says, Pastor, will you counsel us? 
I said, I'm not a very good counselor. But I said, I can be your pastor. And I can pray with you. And then I told him, I said, you know, 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to a cross. And he died on that cross. And a family was restored even at the feet of Jesus himself. I said, let's hold hands and let's pray together right now that Jesus will restore this marriage. We joined hands around that kitchen table and we begin to pray. And God began to put the pieces back together. I remember when I resigned that church and was ready to come up and move up here to Idaho. That fellow, he stood and he testified. And he said, you know, one day I called for my pastor. And I asked him to give me some counseling. And he said, I'm not a very good counselor. But he said he grabbed my hand and he prayed with me and my wife. And he said, today our marriage is restored. Because Jesus already paid the price 2,000 years ago. Yes, God can redeem and restore your family once again with the love of God. You are the Christ. Save yourself and us. Stop. Stop. Don't you even fear God? We deserve the reward for our deeds. But this man's done nothing wrong. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Surely, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. He hung between, between two thieves. One thief rebuked him. The other thief was repentant in his heart and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it didn't matter what this thief had done. He committed sin and, and crimes that was worthy of death itself. But yet right there on the cross, he said, Lord, remember me. He who calls upon the Lord shall be saved, the Bible says. Will you call upon him today? Will you ask him to come into your heart and into your life? He didn't have time to change his life. In a few minutes, he's going to die. But because he called upon Jesus, he's going to heaven. And have eternal life. He might be going through pain now, but the Bible says that in heaven, there is no pain. There is no suffering. There is no disease. In other words, he's been saved. Born again, Jesus has come into his heart and given him a new life. And he's going to heaven. Jesus will do the same for you. If you but call upon him and say, Lord, forgive me and come into my heart, he will. And that's your ticket to heaven this morning. Father, into your hand. I command my spirit. You've been a witness this morning of what took place 2,000 years ago on a cross where he hung between the thieves and he bled and he died for the remission of your sins. Can you imagine with me how God must have felt to have sent his son to a world that was so sinful and so full of shame and to allow his son to die on a cross? To bear the sins of each and every one of us upon that cross. It was the ultimate sacrifice. The one, the only, the final sacrifice that was made for man. I heard a story not long ago. And in this story, there was a man who was a drop, drop bridge operator. One day the drop bridge was down. And he had his son with him. 
at the workplace. And it says in that story that all of a sudden he saw a train coming down the track, but yet the bridge was down. And he knew he had to make a split second decision to either raise that bridge or to leave it lowered. For you see, his son had begun to play on the gears of that drop bridge. This is a true story. And as he saw the train coming, he had to make that split second decision to decide whether or not he would allow his son to die or save the people in the train that was coming. All of a sudden, he made that decision. He pushed the button. His son was on the gears. And as the bridge began to raise up, he heard his son's bones being crushed. He heard the blood curdling scream come from his son's mouth. Father, father. He knew that his son was dying. Tears streamed down his face. And as soon as that bridge had closed, all of a sudden here came that train coming across that track. And he looked out at that train and saw all the people sitting there and he was screaming and saying, don't you know what I've done for you? My son died so that you might live. As the train was going by, he saw people sitting there reading their newspapers, drinking their coffee on the way to work. They had no idea what had taken place. You see, he spared or he killed his son so that a train load of people might live. And that's exactly what God has done for you and for me this morning. He wants you to know. He's screaming at your heart today saying, don't you know what I've done for you? My son has died for you so that you might live. But yet many times we go through our life reading our spiritual newspapers and drinking our coffee. <coughs> and we go through week after week, Sunday after Sunday, not thinking and realizing the price that was actually paid for you and for me. But I'm so glad that that price was paid. They're playing that song at the cross, at the cross. Would you join in with me? Let's sing it together. <laughs> at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. body of Jesus that they laid him in a tomb he was in that tomb for three days and on Sunday marking today Jesus rose from the dead
Why don't you give all those folks a hand clap this morning? Have you been touched this morning? Amen. Amen. I'd like to go ahead and ask all the folks. I can't see for the lights very well. All the folks that was in the play, I want you to come and join me here at the front. Amen. Come stand with me. Give them another hand clap. They did a great job. morning wouldn't have been possible. Amen. This guy's all right. Praise God. All these folks are great. They put a lot of time into this and, and, and a lot of effort. They've had to adjust their schedules in order to come and, and to help practice and get things set up for this. But you know the reason they did it is because they love you. With all their hearts, they love you. And you know this morning, I think really the reason you're here is because you're looking for love. You're looking to be loved. As we said earlier, not the worldly kind of love, but the heavenly kind of love. If I could, I'd like to ask just for the cameras to go ahead and be shut. How you doing, Dave? Good. He's following me with that camera. Well, <laughs> Smile. Ha, ha, ha. 